How in the world do you disengage that buckle the drive feature on this 2022 refresh Chevy Silverado amongst other GMC models as well? We're gonna talk about that today, not to mention, I wanna talk about some other things in terms of the new screen, some tips for that, as well as the screen in front of you as a driver. With that, let's get going. All right, let's head on inside. This is gonna really pertain to many of you who are getting or who've already gotten a new refresh truck. It doesn't matter if it's a GMC Sierra or a Chevy Silverado. They're using the same internal systems for the most part. By the way, I don't know if you've seen this yet, but there is new key fobs for these, much like we're, uh, we saw with our uh, 2021 Chevy Tahoe and um, uh, GMC Yukons, right? So anyways, heading on inside here. Check this out, by the way. Look at this start feature. Trail boss there. This typically comes up. Let's see if we, what we do when we start this here. Ah, it's because I was just in it not long before. The, oh, there we go. But usually there's a whole starting feature. Oh yeah, here's what I'm talking about. Do you see that right there? Buckle seat belt to shift. So right now, if I want to put it in drive, see, it's not letting me put it into drive, okay? Now, let me be the first to say, I am a huge proponent of wearing your seatbelt. So I'm not recommending this in, a, in such a way that I'm saying, I don't want people that we are wearing their seatbelts, don't worry about it. But like, I mean, I, obviously I can use myself. I'm on the, I'm here on the dealership lot, by the way, here at Pro Chevrolet, uh, if you didn't already know that here in Sault Ste. Marie. So when I'm on the dealership lot, and I'm just trying to move, move a vehicle, I'm just turning the fan down here. If I'm trying to move the vehicle from point A to B, um, basically what I don't want it to do is, is I don't want to have to literally buckle up every time. Now, again, I buckle up if I'm going on the road out there, yeah, I'm buckling up to drive. But otherwise, it's a bit of an annoyance, right? So I want to show you how to take that off. I'm going to show you some other things with the new screen and stuff as well. Um, this one's obviously in a demo mode, so I just got to go past that. But I'm going to show you a couple of new things about this screen. Uh, one of the things that I was perturbed by, and now I understand the reasoning by, and I want to show you that right off the bat, is when we have the backup camera. Now, one thing I want to show you too, when it comes to that buckle the drive feature though, before I forget, see how it's gone? That is because after, I think it's 20 seconds, I haven't timed yet, I believe it's 20 seconds, it will disappear, but you still have to sit there for 20 seconds, right? Okay, so besides that though, um, over here to this screen, I wanna show you something. When I put this in reverse, because now it will go in reverse, as you saw, I'm not buckled up, and it did. Um, this particular one is situ it has the, uh, the surround vision camera. If you didn't already know so, more trim levels, I'm gonna put this back in park, more trim levels than ever before, mid trim level trucks now are coming with the surround vision camera as an option. You couldn't get it in a trail boss or an elevation or uh, an RST in the past. And now on these 2022 refresh Chevy Silverado and GMC Sierras, you can get that. And what's cool about that is something I wanna show you right now. And that comes to do with the trailering. So when we go here for a moment, perhaps, maybe, there we go. Um, and we scroll over here to trailering. This is a really cool feature. First of all, of course, you have this, this trailer app here where you can set things up now. But if we go back to here and we go to settings, I wanna show you something This is really neat here too. And we go down here to vehicle and we go down to, oh, sorry, oh, I'm gonna go back to trailering, sorry about that. Uh, trailering. So what's cool about this now, if you didn't already know this, when you have the surround vision camera and you have the trailer equipment hooked up to this vehicle, when I hit this turn signal, so if I'm if I hit my turn signal over here, it's not gonna show right now because I don't have a trailer on, it is gonna show on the screen this this side mirror and it's gonna show back. So you're gonna be able to see, you know, if you're turning that corner, if you're getting too close to um uh, you know, the, 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 the trailer, um, you know, hitting something. It's also got a, a, a length indicator, jackknife uh, alert, and the bed view camera lighting. So it's got some pretty cool stuff um, with the trailer. Now, heading back here for a second, let's talk about what we initially want to talk about in the video, and then I'll talk about more if you want to stay tuned for that, all right? So first of all, we want to go back. I want to show you from the start. So I'm going to hit back to the homepage here. Um, when we do that, again, we're going to go into settings. So this is, the, by the way, to get rid of the buckle to drive. Go to settings. You're gonna go back to vehicle, all right? Once you're in vehicle, you can see right there, buckle to drive. All I have to do is take that off. Now when I start the vehicle and I get in, I can just put it in gear and drive. Again, please buckle your seatbelt. I think it's, it's it's obviously a massive safety feature you do not want to overlook. And I definitely am not recommending don't wear your seatbelt. I just want to show you how to disengage it if you're just trying to do stuff around the house and you're, you're getting in and out of the truck, whatever it is, you can take that off. Now, as a heads up, once you've driven it, you put it in park, the vehicle's still running, maybe you get out to move your garbage pail and you get back in, you don't have to do it then. It'll automatically, you know, if you haven't disengaged it, it'll automatically still uh, allow you to drive. It's just on, upon initial startup that it does that. Now, a couple more things I want to show you the screen, so if you want to stay tuned for that. Um, first of all, 
One of the things I had an issue with with this was when you had the backup camera on, get back to that here for a second. I never understood why we have this massive 13.4 inch color touchscreen, but we only use three quarters of it for the backup camera. I have come to learn that because of that and because of the quality of the camera, so it is an HD quality camera, but obviously it would have to be an even higher enough one, higher end camera, which would cost a lot more money. Um, it would look distorted if this whole thing was a camera. And really this is bigger than what we had in the past anyways. So what they've done is they've just utilized this as being the size of the camera that they want to use, all right? So again, and then here's some of your surround vision views, by the way, which is pretty cool. That's right down on where the hitch is. Uh, when you're here, that's behind, but we can hit it, also hit it so that's in front of us. So some pretty cool views here that's showing us. You can have the lines for the trailer or not right so anyway that is one of the things i want to tell you that is why they've done this but now if we go back to the home page here for a second what i like about this screen is it also allows you to let's put it back in park here that'll help um and when we have it back in park here yeah, there we go there are some different ways you can you can configure this so let's say if we're in maps right now okay we're on our navigation you can have it always makes me do this because we're in demo mode. give me a second here we'll get past this turn on yes all right so Done. Yeah, 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 yeah. You probably just saw one of the things I'm gonna show you, but all right, so right now, of course, you can have the whole thing as, as a map, or you can turn this over here. You can have your radio stations. Right now, we don't have a radio station selected, but it would show you on there. You can scroll up here. You can have your trailer stuff up on here, or you can just have a regular clock there, so you can have this in combination. I really do like the fact, though, that I can see my music station up here at a decent size, and also, this is still, this is as big or bigger than our old 8-inch color touchscreen is for the navigation anyway, or again, you just hit this, and it gives you the whole screen. So that's kind of cool. Now, when we are back on the home, same thing. You can have the audio up right now, okay? And then over here, again, so let's say we're on, let's go to XM Radio here for a second. Oh, oh we gotta turn that down. We don't want the uh, YouTube, I'm gonna have to mute that for a second. Um, okay, so what we can do basically here is you can have, again, you can have the radio station up here, you can have your navigation over here, or you can have a clock up here as well. That's kind of cool. Like our other one too, you can hold on these and you can change where they go location-wise. Also, if let's say a phone is one of the ones you use the most, you can actually take this here and put it over as one of your favorites over along there, right? So there's ways that you can configure all this. Now, when it comes to the map, something I need to tell you, because I get this question asked all the time, is in the navigation of this truck. It has Google Maps, as you can see here right now. It is set up because it's in dealer mode. When you get this vehicle, the Google Maps, it's integrated in this vehicle is not like your standard navigation like you'd get in the old trucks in the past where it's just it's 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 in there it's saved in there uh, and it works you're not paying anything extra you paid for it as part of the vehicle this is done through a, like basically a cloud-based service right so you need the OnStar you need an active OnStar subscription with a data plan in order for this to work after your free, free trial by the way when you buy the vehicle is up so that is not something that you can use all the time unless you have data but but if that is not something you want to do, you still have, it's kind of hard to see. I don't know why they grade these out, but there's Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You could use your own phone in here uh, and, and pull the data up from there. So you're just using the data from your phone as opposed to buying extra data for the vehicle through OnStar. Entirely up to you how you want to do it. Last thing I want to show you, again, if you haven't seen this already, this is a fully programmable um, uh, screen here in front of you now, which I really like. So you can have different things on either side. And, and I wanted to show you here too, not only that, but you have different layouts. So you can have the classic, you can have the progressive, which is a different look. I'm just gonna show you them all. You have the digital, like that. And then you have clean here as well, okay? Which is exactly kind of what it says. It's a pretty clean look, right? So let's go back to the classic just to kind of show you a couple other things. What I really like about this now is once you're in that area, by the way, if you didn't see how I got there, you just, this is probably where you're gonna be at. Obviously this here controls what you see up in front of you. You'll go across till you see the little gear shift, uh, the gear, the gear, pardon me, gear shift. Um, and then you can change what you want on either side. So on the left side, let's say I want the tire pressure, okay? And go back. And on the right side, I want, oops. On the right side, I click that. I want the uh, trans fluid temp. <laughs> I know that's something I'm not really gonna care about, maybe unless I'm pulling something big. Uh, you can have that on the screen over there as well. 
Uh, and then not only that, you can also change what you da have down here at the lower. So it gives you the a maximum amount of things. So you can have your battery life, your oil life, your fuel, and your temperature gauge. You can have medium where it shows your temp gauge, your fuel gauge, and you can have minimum where it's just going to show you your fuel gauge, your uh, odometer, and um, you know what drive system you're in. So again, you can change all of that, which I think is really cool. Uh, info page options, by the way, is just going to allow you on, on when you're back in your information center, what things are going to come up. So if you don't care about all of these, but you, or you want all of them. So for an example, I don't know why it defaults, but your fuel economy is on it. And I know a lot of you, when you're in here and you're scrolling down, you want to see what your instant fuel economy is, right? So there's your trip meter of fuel economy. But if you want that, you just have to go over here and um, you can change you can change that. Units, by the way, I'm, I'm in Canada, so of course um, I can change it from US uh, to metric, which is where we're on metric here. A number of different things, but that's just some of the stuff I wanted to show you today. More importantly, again, I wanted to show you how to reduce that buckle of the drive. I'm gonna talk more about this screen in the future. If you have any questions in regards to this or, or this screen here or any of the internals of the new trucks, Sierra, Silverado, whatever it is, um, please let me know and maybe I'll address it in the next video. As always, I wanna thank you so much for watching. Until next time, oh, hit that subscribe button. Take care.